Welcome back to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. Today in lesson 19, we will cover how to count with the frequency function. To the left, I have a table that consists of exam scores. I would like to be able to count the number of students in each exam score range I have listed here. We can use count if or count ifs to do the counting in each score range but there is a much easier way to do this using the frequency function. So step one will be to set up a frequency table for counting. I'm going to paste a table I had pre-made in, but this is important because we must tell Excel the counting boundary we want. This is what we've done in this column here called upper limit. For example, this 60 means that we want to count the number of students who received up to 60, including 60. Now we can move on to the second step, which is entering the frequency function. You can see that there are two arguments in the syntax, the first being the data array. In this case, that'll be our exam score column. Now we have the bins array. This will be our upper limit column from our frequency table. Now you might be wondering why Excel calls it a bins array. Bin is actually a term for a number range. So think of it kind of like using a bin or box to hold the numbers in a particular range. So let's put a closing bracket and press enter. So you can see just by entering that one frequency function, Excel generated the entire frequency table for us. So let's take a closer look at the um, frequency table again, specifically at our upper limits. You can see we didn't put 100 after the 90, and you might be wondering why. Well, because this exam is in a percentage, no one is going to receive more than 100%. This means the last upper limit is 90, which tells Excel that all values above 90 will be counted as an additional category or bin. All right, let's try playing around with our exam scores a bit to see if our upper limits are set up correctly. In our frequency table, you can see that there is one student who received a score of 60 or lower. If we move to the left, that student actually corresponds to the first student in our exam score table as they received a score of uh, 59%. I'm gonna change this 59 to a 60 to see if there are any changes in my frequency table. When I look to the right, there are no changes and this confirms our expectations that scores of 60 or lower and including 60 will be included in our first boundary. Now let's try changing this first exam score to 60.01. When we look to the right, we can see that there are no longer any students in our first upper limit. Instead, there's an additional student in our second boundary. I'm going to change this 60.01 back to a 59 and remove all the formatting I had. Now you might be wondering what we do if we want to change the score range. So for example, what if we wanted to count the number of students who received scores under 60 so that it did not include 60? Well, we would have to generate an initial similar table as above, which I have already pre-made here. And then we would use this table like we did before to generate a new frequency table with different upper limits. And then we would use our frequency function to calculate the number of students in each boundary. I will leave you guys the chance to figure out the rest of this new frequency table, and that concludes today's lesson. It's important to remember when using the frequency function, it is only applicable for a single column and the column values must be numbers. If the column values are not numbers or you need to count for multiple criteria, then you need to use the COUNTIFS function. Thank you so much for watching and tune into the next lesson where we will cover some ifs.